Today we're going to talk about E34 door panels, namely touring door panels. Now, if you've had one of these cars or if you just bought one of these cars, you know that door panels can make or break, you know, whether you feel like the car is nice or not. Uh, this is a 94 and 94 and older cars got the standard door panels. I mean, there's a couple different types, but they come apart. The, the insert peels and they have, they have the clip mounts break off and 95 model year, the clips still break off, but they have something called gathered leather. They have leather door poles. They're much nicer. The trouble is 95 is only one year. So finding nice 95 panels is pretty tough and it's even tougher to find them for a touring. So today I'm going to show you how to use a sedan door panel and modify it to use in a touring. So first let's talk about the difference between a gathered door panel and a regular door panel. So this is the original door panel from this car. This is a 94. So this is the non-gathered insert. This is the gathered insert. As you can see, the material is a little bit different. It's thicker. It's a little more plush. It looks a lot nicer. And these are much stronger door panels as far as they, they last a lot longer. I've seen these in much better shape than I have with these. It's really rare to find these in good shape. They're just all coming apart. They have multiple issues like this is starting to peel here. Um, again, some of it's from moisture, some of it's from sitting out in the sun, um, and it's, some of it's from abuse. But in general, these are a lot more robust. It, you know, mid-90s BMW's door panels are a very sore topic. While these door panels might all look the same, there's something you need to know, and that is that you cannot put a sedan door panel on a wagon. And conversely, you can't put a wagon door panel on a sedan. The difference is the shape of the door from about this point up. Uh, obviously the body lines on the wagon are much different than a sedan and they shape the rear doors to you know to kind of match. So to find wagon door panels that are gathered is pretty impossible. I did not I was not able to find them but what I was able to do is modify the sedan door panels using some of the old wagons door panels uh, and basically made the door panel a touring door panel and I'm going to show you how to do that. So to get the door panel off you need a few tools. You need a pick or a sharp, sharp object to pull some uh, clip covers and screw covers off. Uh, you need a Phillips screwdriver, preferably a number two, a T20 driver, and a, I use this as a panel removal tool. Uh, you can use, they make all kinds of different stuff, but this is for popping the actual door panel off of the door. So first you want to start out by unscrewing the door lock little knob here set that in here then you want to pop the ashtray out then that exposes a Phillips screw we'll take that out then we'll take your pick or whatever you decide to use and there is in the side of the center of the door handle pole there's a screw cap so we're gonna kind of pull that off using this pick I like to use really skinny stuff so you don't mar up anything. And behind that is another number two. Another Phillips screw out. And we're throwing tools. The last thing you need to take out as far as a trim cover or clip cover is this. Now this is different if you have a leather door pull or a vinyl door pull. Um, this car had uh, different door pulls in the back and I had to take this and grind it down because essentially the vinyl door pull is underneath this leather. So obviously this, this piece is going to be a little bit smaller. So make sure you don't lose that. And then that's where the, if I remember correctly, nope, it's another Phillips screw. Nope, I guess you don't need a T20. I'm thinking about the front. So we'll take that Phillips screw out of here. All right, so that's loose. So then we're going to take this, kind of work our way around. You can kind of see where the clips are. I'm just going to gently go around. One thing you never really want to do is pull by the actual door panel. That's how you remove the clips from the door panel, which is not what you want to do. You can hear that one starting to come apart. All 
All right, so now that you've got all of those popped out, you kind of want to work this back. And as you can see, the top of this door panel is already loose. Just kind of pull this. And then take the door pull and pull up. Yep, I broke a couple of those off. They're very fragile, but we'll, we'll get those glued back on. And there is a door cable pull and the switch, and your door panel is off. So this is a sedan door panel, and this is the top piece from a Touring. This is the most important. When you measure the length of the two, you lined it up at the front, which is the same up here, you see that the back of it is about three quarters of an inch shorter. So to convert a sedan door panel to a wagon, you need to take this off of your touring door panel. Uh, sometimes they do that for you, like in this case, uh, but most of the time you can just kind of peel them off. This door, this one's not in very good shape. Sometimes you need a little bit of heat. Actually, this one's been, this one's been kind of rigged on here. Regardless, uh, getting this off is the most important. This is the only piece you need to swap between the two door panels. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to glue this on and fix the clip mounts now. So this is a common problem with uh, all BMW door panels from this era is that these get ripped off. To get these off correctly, you pretty much have to pry just on the clip itself and not on the door panel. As you can see, this this door panel has been wet for a time or two, uh, probably a, a moisture barrier, vapor barrier problem. But uh, most people go ahead and just glue these back on and that is what you can do. However, there is a little prep needed. Uh, in my experience, for these to stay together and work the best, you have to kind of scuff up this area. Uh, this is actually pretty decent here, but these, you need to get all of this off of here. It's not a lot for that glue to adhere to. So I'm gonna use a, uh, my die grinder here and kind of sand this stuff off here. Kind of rough up the surface. All right, so as you can see, I've got these kind of prepped. I've got the all the uh, door panel backing material off of them. So now we can, we're, I'm gonna use this uh, plastic welding Permatex epoxy. I've used a bunch of different stuff. I would not use hot glue. That's what I used before when I put the top on that door panel. And as you can see, uh, it got hot outside and it fell off. So we're gonna glue this back on. The exact same spot that it was before. Press firmly. And then we're also going to put have these cool clamps. Kind of clamp it down here. All right. A little bit bigger of a clamp this time. Just as I did on those clips, we're going to take off all this glue using this. We got to be very careful because we don't want to take much of this material away. Actually, this works pretty good too. Just pulling on it. Who would have thought? All right, so now I'm just going to rough up the surface. So can it adhere a little better? So we also want to scuff up the piece that's getting glued on. So I replaced the bit in this to give it a little more grab and all right it should be good both services are now prepped uh, with everything scuffed up to promote the best adhesion possible and the re we're going to apply the epoxy to the actual door panel I'm using this JB weld clear weld it says it sets in five minutes. We'll, we'll, see, that, we'll see if we believe that or not. Um, the reason we're going to apply this to the actual panel and not this piece is we don't really want to waste any epoxy in these pockets. Uh, there's, there's not like a corresponding nub in here for them, for that epoxy to touch any surface. So if we apply it to here, we know that the epoxy will get to where it needs to go. So we're going to go ahead and mix this and spread it as thoroughly as we can.
This may not be enough, but we'll get started with it. Does not particularly smell good. So we don't want to go too close to this bottom edge here because if when we go to squeeze this on, we don't want that epoxy running down onto the outside of the door panel. So we're kind of sticking to the upper areas and we'll do the top section as well. Kind of got to work quick because this stuff does set up pretty quickly. Best thing I want to do is have it hardened by the time I'm ready to stick this thing on. So, we're going to kind of set this on here. Now we're going to put some of these in for clamps. Make sure it doesn't move. We're going to let this set up for quite some time. The reason for using these is they spread the pressure out a little bit so we're not in a situation where we're leaving little dimples on these door panels. Sawzall blades will work. Okay, so now that we got all our clamps on, it's holding that on there, uh, we're going to kind of leave it for probably about an hour. While that's setting up, we're going to remove this clip because we need to take it off of this, put it on the door panel before we can reinstall the door panel. So to do this, I use these duckbill pliers and kind of squeeze. And just work it off. There you go. That piece that I took off of the door, that slides right in here. Is, there's two little bumps here to keep that in place. Now we're ready to put the door panel on. So the first thing you want to do is put this rod for the door lock actuator through the hole. And then you can put your door pole through the door handle and then plug in the switch for the window. And then you're ready to just pop this on. You gotta be pretty careful when you do this. I try to use the holes as like a guide. And there's that center one. And then I like to go all the way around and make sure that these are all in the right spot before you press. This way you know you're not gonna break a clip. And then that creates more work. So I don't even press them in until it feels like they're all where they need to go. And then I just snap them in. And then on the top, this is probably the trickiest part. Is to get this snapped on these clips. I usually just give it a little all the way down. All right, that looks pretty decent. Now we can put all the screws back in. Screws already there. Get cat cover in. Like so. Screw for the inner door handle. And cover for it. And then screw for the section. Get these, hopefully. And then, last but not least, thread on your door lock pole. So the process is not very difficult. Uh, just a couple kind of special tools, some clamps. You can actually use something, uh, some weight. Uh, and again, there's a lot of different types of epoxy you can use. Whether I use the right one or not, uh, time will tell. Uh, I did clamp those a little too tight, I think, and it left some impressions in the top. I think that'll come out with some time, maybe a little heat, 
but uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. That has been loose for a really, really long time. I've had this car for probably eight years, and it's, I think I put door panels on it in the first year I had it. So it was something I needed to do, and I figured I'd show you guys how to save some money and some grief trying to find 95 touring panels, which is just, I mean, you have a better chance of winning the lottery, it seems. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe.